subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and give it a like if you want. Uh, we're going to do a review on the CVA Wolf. It's an entry level muzzle loader, and this one is set up for Northwest, which is Washington, Oregon, and Idaho rules with the open breech plug. So I've had a chance to use this at the range to sight it in. Um, I've had a chance to clean it. I've had a chance to hunt with it. Uh, muzzle loader deer season here. And um, I noted a lot of uh, particular things that I think are going to help you out in making your choice on either purchasing this or if you're having trouble with misfires or whatever. So keep watching and we'll go. Uh, an entry level muzzle loader. This particular model has the Northwest breech plug that has the holes in it. Also, it is the kind that takes musket caps. So this is a Northwest model, and uh, it's set up to legally hunt in the state of Washington. And Oregon and Idaho have similar rules, which include having the open sights, no scope, no electronics on the gun, and um, the open breech here, and like I said, musket caps instead of primers. So those are the things that we're gonna focus on today some of the cleaning items that I've got. Everything down in the bottom uh, description will have links to everything that Amazon would have online. And if I can find other places with the links on some of the stuff, I'll put that down there too. So since we have not fired this weapon yet, uh, today we're going to do a test fire. And I have some rudimentary targets because muscle loading and open sights are not super accurate uh, but I've got one out there at uh, 25 yards one at 50 yards that last one's a 65 yard target um, pretty much I, I believe the useful range on these is probably a hundred yards but anyway getting back to the the misfire problem in the in the video at the range you'll see I had two misfires and I had before I shot this thing, I had thoroughly cleaned it, um, actually ignited a musket cap like they recommend that you do, and I still had two misfires in a row. So um, one of the things that I noted that helped me was, first of all, when you push the musket cap on to the nipple here, you have to push it on firmly, and I took my fingernail and just kind of rubbed it around on there pretty tightly um, to make sure that it was seated all the way. I don't know if that helped, but these are all things I'm just pointing out that led to the success of a good ignition after that every time. Uh, another thing is I cleaned the, uh, the hole here in the nipple with the breech plug brush like this, and I'll have a link down below in the description for that. Clean that out take the breech plug out and look through it see that you can see uh, see light through there that was another thing that I did even though it was already clean when I started trying to fire the rifle or the uh, muzzle loader um, according to the manual they also recommend that due to some sort of safety mechanism that you snap this shut firmly that was straight out of the manual so that's another thing that I tried too and when you're in the field, before you hunt, even if the, right, the muzzleloader's been stored for a while, make sure the barrel is empty and there's no powder or bullet in it. And fire a musket cap through just to clear that hole. That was the fourth thing that I noted. So for detonation here, we've got musket caps. These are different than primers. You can see that little, those little flanges, the four flanges there. Um, also, I'm using pellets versus the uh, the powder. These are a lot easier. You just drop two of those in there, and now then you've got 100 grains of powder. I'm also using the Sabo bullets. You've got uh, choices. You can use the belted bullets that they are kind of pushing with these, but uh, I was told from the guy that sold me the rifle and he's very experienced he prefers the sabos um, so this is what we're going to use today so we're going to use a sharpie because we're going to mark 
the level at which the ramrod goes in and seats the pellets and the sabo so that we can make sure that we're fully seating it next time. Um, here's also some uh, breech plug uh, thread grease, the uh, bullet starter, some cleaning items here, miscellaneous cleaning items, the bullet stall, and some pre saturated bore cleaning patches. So I'll have all this stuff, links in the bottom, all the stuff I got on Amazon. You can get it at your local dealer if they're in stock. What I'm finding though is a lot of places are out of stock of a lot of things. So let's get right to it. We'll do the safety inspection and then we will show you how I load this thing up and we're gonna test fire and see where the sights are lined up. Hey, while I'm thinking about it, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below. That'll help us out. And that'll help you out when we make more videos regarding all of this stuff. We've got tons of different videos on many different subjects that are a lot of fun, good projects for people. And um, also hit the like button if you like the video. That'll help the algorithms and get us a little bit more exposure on our channel. Uh, to open the breach, you push this button here and it pops the breech open. You can see the breech plug there. It's got these holes in it, and these are northwest type of uh, breech plugs. And it just keeps it open to the elements. The, the government here thinks that that's important. And also, this is specifically made for the uh, musket caps here, instead of the 209 primers. This breech plug unscrews simply there you go, tiny little hole in there. And uh, you can see through it, so we know it's not plugged up. That means it's gonna, it's gonna fire, at least the musket cap will put the, uh, the fire through to the powder charge. And one thing I have read that people recommend is to fire a cap or a primer through this before you load your first um, charge. And I, I can see through the barrel I don't know if you can see it through here, but it is unobstructed, so we know we're good on that. So we just pop this back together like that. For the sight, I have it just set right in the center, and I have no idea where this thing's going to hit at 25 and 50 yards. But we're going to start in the center and just see where it hits, and then we'll make some adjustments as we So go. the safety on this thing, if you're not pulling the trigger back, this hammer will not hit the uh, striker right there. So if you hold this, the trigger back, it will go forward, and that's just kind of a safety thing, uh, just so you know. Anyway, uh, we've cleared the weapon. We know that there is nothing in the barrel. There's no, there's no musket cap in there, and we're just going to take these pre-measured. These are 50 gram or 50 grain, sorry, uh, equivalent pellets and what we're going to do is just take two to make a hundred grains and drop them in the end and so we've got our powder charge in there and then we're going to take the uh, sabo and the bullet and put those in there next so one thing, uh, another thing I wanted to point out is that this ramrod without the tip on it is probably going to be too short. So I used the tip that came with this bullet starter. Uh, there's two of them that came with it. And if you put this in here and see where it goes on top of the powder, you can see that it's almost flush there. And with the bullet in there, we can see that it's going to be up probably around that mark. So one of the things that I found that you can do is buy one of these extensions. Uh, it's a JAG extender, and I'll have all the links down below for you. But that brings the ramrod up a little bit uh, if you prefer that. So, you know, you can either use this tip, which fits nicely over the end of the bullet, or you can use the short tip and go that route. But either way, you want to make sure that whatever you decide you're going to use, 
I'm going to mark it, okay? And so what I'm going to do, rather than using this one, I'm going to use the extended one. And that way, I have a little bit more room to play with right here. Also, in the field, this is going to be a lot less likely to get lost than this thing. Okay, so another benefit of having the extended, the JAG extender on there, is it also doubles as a cleaning end. You can see that. It's got some knurled parts there. And so if you wanted to clean in between shots or at the range, it effectively turns your ramrod into a range rod. And as you can see, it'll go all the way through the barrel so that you can do a thorough cleaning. So that's another reason to have one of these on the end. All right, so we've got the powder charge in there. And we're just going to go ahead and put the... Uh, the bullet in the Sabo here, just like that. And then we're gonna just put the uh, Sabo in the end here. We're gonna use our starter and just kind of slowly work it down in there. And it's gonna be snug, but this will help to uh, get it started nice and deep into the barrel. Keep track of what you're doing. Two pellets, Sabo, bullet, we've got it started. And now we're gonna finish pressing the Sabo and the bullet down until it stops. You don't wanna, you don't wanna ram it and smash it all in there. Just push it in there until it's snug and stop. Now I'm going to take the marker and, you know, probably some blue tape or something would work too, but for now I'm just going to mark it right here. And after today, I'll know that that's exactly where I need to be each time I put the bullet in there. That way I don't it the wrong way. Got a bee buzzing me. All right, so we got our charge. We've got the Sabo and the bullet in there. And now we're going to put the musket cap in. Kind of see that thing there, what it looks like. It looks just, it's basically just a primer, but it's got those little wings on it. So we're just going to put that thing in there. Now, if you're in the field and it's cold, yeah, these things are a little hard to, to deal with, but um, it just sets in there just like that. And then we close it up. And we're going to put on some herring protection. And we're going to do our uh, first shot. So we're going to do the 25-yard target first. Let's clear down range. I let the gun sit for a little while while we're making sure the powder wasn't going to go off before I did all that. So let's give it another shot. Let's hope that we're successful. Fail number two. So we're going to let this thing sit again. So that's pretty good. That's right in the center at 25 yards. Uh, looks around six inches high. So let's go for the 50 yarder. All right, so we're just gonna make sure that we take the uh, tool if you need to. And these musket caps fall, pretty much fall right out, but they do give you a tool here to take them off with. And you can see how dirty that thing gets. So. Okay. 
So that's uh, 50 yards and that looks like about maybe eight inches high at 50 yards. So I think I'm gonna drop the site down a little bit so that we're a little bit closer to here at 50 yards. And then the drop will be probably perfect at 100 yards, but I can remember where it's at and uh, compensate. Ooh, this thing kicks. It's a monster. All right, so here's the 50 yard target. And we started off, that's where we hit here in the beginning. And then we adjusted the site, the ramp, the second time and hit here. And this is the last. So pretty much, you know, for open sites, that's pretty good at 50 yards. Uh, good enough for me anyway. Um, but I wanted to show you where those settings were on this open site here just for reference for you and I know conditions change and all that but when we started off we had the site zoom in here a little bit we had the the ramp set right here um, right about in the middle on that tick mark in the center there okay and then we want that was too high at 50 yards now that might be good for 100 yards so remember that, that the center tick on this rifle anyway, the one that I'm shooting today, probably is good for 100 yards. And I moved it back to right about here on the second shot. Put us too low, as you can see right here, at 50 yards. You don't want to be that low at 50 yards. And then I just moved it right back up to the one, two, third tick mark from the bottom, just one down from the top, and that put us pretty much centered at 50 yards. So that's what you can refer to if you buy this weapon and you're sighting it in. Those are some good guidelines as far as I can tell. So, Okay, so now we're going to talk about cleaning. And what I do is... take this 50 cal brush and I run it take the breech plug out run it through a couple times to knock the loose powder out or the the burnt powder carbon whatever you want to call it and then I take a pre-moistened patch I'll have a link down below for this this is by uh, Thompson Center but uh, these are pretty handy because they're already pre-moistened Put this extender on the end of your ramrod and swab the barrel a couple times. And then you want to take your ballistol and you can mix it between either one part ballistol to three parts water or some people have opinions like one part to seven, one part ballistol to seven parts water. Anywhere in that range works. I put it in a jar to hang on to it so that I can reuse it several times. So you take that, a dry patch, soak it in the ballistol, run it with the ramrod again with the extension on it, and then you start putting dry patches through with no ballistol on it until it's clean. Okay, so if you want to take the barrel off, you just undo the screw right here. It's just a flat head screwdriver, and the barrel just pivots right out of there. That'll give you better access to cleaning these areas here, and also the um, firing pin area, which you can kind of see in there, hopefully. Um, and once you get the breech plug out, you're gonna use this breech plug brush and like I said before just clean it out and then um, you could brush this a little bit this end here 
And then you're gonna take and soak it in your Ballistol slash water filled jar. So I would put that in to soak while you're working on the rest of the rifle. And then when you take it back out, you're just gonna, it's water soluble. So you take it to the sink after you've brushed it a little bit and run some water over it. Set that out to dry. And once it's dry overnight is what I do. I put the, uh, the breech plug grease on there. All the stuff's in the description below. Finally, you're gonna just take a clean cloth and just wipe down the exterior. If you've got any kind of residue or buildup, you can just take some of the Ballistol or gun oil works on the exterior. And then dry it all. Do you bite, bro? Okay, so I wanted to go over some of my experiences just out in the field hunting with this thing, because that's what you really care about is um, when you're actually using it in real life. So one of the things I noted was with this thing on my back with the sling, this release lever, if you're kind of messing around trying to get comfortable or whatever, you push up on this and if you're wearing a backpack, this can catch on the backpack and then you've got that happening and then your musket cap falls out on the ground. And so that happened to me once and after that I was real careful not to, you know, be pulling up on it with the backpack on. So that's one thing I, I don't really care. For. I mean, this is convenient, but it's, it's prone to getting popped open just like that, so. Put the breech plug back in here. Other than that, it's a very light and maneuverable firearm. Um, I think it's great. I mean, it's a lot lighter than my modern rifles, of course, because there's no scope or anything on it like that. It's, it's pretty short. Uh, barrel. One thing I will say is that the reach here is a lot shorter than I prefer. I would rather, since I have long arms, I'd rather be out a little bit more, but you know, I make it work and I haven't had any problems with that. Nice, really good uh, pad here. Makes it pretty comfortable. So um, another thing too, while you're out there in the field, is um, <clears throat> you're gonna obviously have to carry some things. You're gonna have to carry this extension. You're gonna have to carry the, uh, the bullet starter here with you. Make sure all that stuff's secured. And then I was crawling through quite a bit of brush. I never had a problem with what I'm gonna talk about, but with this mounted here on the end, it is possible that a branch could, could snag it. Now, you would have to go quite a ways before it actually came all the way out and you lost it, but you might want to think about taking the palm saver off of that if you're going through a lot of brushy stuff. Otherwise, I wouldn't worry about it. I never lost it in 10 miles of hiking with this thing, so that should be okay. Anyway, that's it uh, for my thoughts after using the weapon for a while. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, check out the other videos. I've got some other stuff about Sitka apparel that I've used in the field, and uh, uh, compact folding saw. So I'll have links, um, you know, on my channel that you can check out all the other videos.